Have you ever thought how the people living in the islands produce or cultivated crops? Do you think that the food that they consume is actually grown in these islands or are they actually procured from outside? So recently, Lakshadweep was also announced as the only Indian territory in India to be 100% organic. So how do you think they did it? In today's video, we're going to be learning something very interesting, which is on the cropping in Indian islands. Before going to this video further, if you guys are new to this channel, don't forget to subscribe. You can also press the bell icon for further notifications from our channel. So before going to the main topic, we need to know where these islands are actually located or which agroclimatic zone do they belong to. But first things first, we need to learn what this agroclimatic zone is. So according to FAO, they define agroclimatic zone as a land unit represented accurately or precisely in terms of major climatic and growing period which is climatically suitable for a certain range of crops and cultivars. So in other words, it is an extension of the climatic classification keeping in view the suitability to agriculture. So the Planning Commission of India have taken in view few criteria in which the agroclimatic zones is formed. The first criteria which they looked upon was the temperature. The second one is the soil, as the soil is nutrient and food giver for these plants. The third one is the rainfall, that without rainfall no life can exist. The fourth one is the topography where these regions they belong, whether they belong to the hilly terrains or towards the coastal areas or the plains. The fifth one being the cropping patterns and the cropping systems practiced by the farmers and the people in those particular regions. The last one is the water bodies, whether the regions where it's situated has perennial rivers or streams or it is situated near the coastal areas, near the oceans or the seas. So these are some of the criteria on which the agroclimatic zone is actually formed. Now coming to the major agroclimatic zones, the major agroclimatic zone in India, the Planning Commission, have divided into 15 major zones and the major objective was to integrate plans of the agroclimatic region with the states and the national plans to enable policy development based on the techno-agroclimatic conditions. So for today, we are going to focus only on one zone, which is the 15 zone, that is the Indian Island regions. In Indian Island regions, the island region includes mainly Andaman, Nicobar, and Lakshadweep Islands. So agriculture in these islands was not very old. The inhabitants of Andaman lived in isolation and were mostly dependent for food on forests, products, fishes, and wild animals. But the plantation of the coconut and arecanut has been there since centuries. So in Lakshadweep, agriculture is an important activity of the islanders that gives economic support it was also reported that they used to exchange coconut and rice for cloth with foreign shippers visiting the islands for China, Malaysia, and Indonesia. Now, when we look into the climate, the climate of these islands, they mostly belong to the tropical humid climates with a bit of high temperature of sun and also a humid weather. The temperature normally ranges from 22 degrees Celsius to 32 degrees Celsius. The annual rainfall ranges from about 3,000 to 3,500 millimeter. We have humidity with a range of 66 to 85, with relative humidity of around 85 to 90 percentage. Now coming to the soil, the soil is a natural and a nutrient food giver for these plants. So the profiling characteristics of the soil show considerable variations from heavy clay to clay loam to sandy soils. If it's sandy soils, then it has less porosity and if it's clay soil, it has a greater porosity. So they have a hilly terrain with valleys rolling to undulating with sporadic and mounded valleys. It also has some coastal alluvial plains. And normally the pH level for these soils, which are found in these islands, ranges from about 3.75 to 7.5, which means that it's towards the acid, acidity level. Now coming to the major crops which are grown in these islands, we have three major crops or categories. The first one is the field crops. We also have plantation crops, spices, vegetables and fruits, and lastly we have flowers. Now coming to the field crops, the major field crops which are grown in these areas are paddy, green gram, as well as black gram. And when we look into the plantation crops, coconut, areca nut, and cashews, they take up the major area of the whole islands, with coconut and areca nut being the major plantation crops. Now coming to the spices, we have a couple of spices which are mainly grown in these areas. The first spices is black pepper, we also have cinnamon, 
bay leaf, nutmeg, turmeric, and ginger. So these spices are usually incorporated with the palm trees like coconut and erica nut in between. The pepper, as you can see in the picture, has been wrapped around the coconut tree around and it's grown into crop. Now coming to some of the vegetables and fruits which are grown, uh, examples would be tomato, chilies, bindis, gourds, pumpkin, cucumber, some of the leafy greens like mustard and spinach. We also have beans and crucifers like cabbage, cauliflower, broccoli. So these vegetables and fruits are mostly cultivated in the coconut gardens in areas available between the coconut palms. Apart from ensuring local availability of the fruits and vegetables, it also helps empower the employment achievers, the economy, and also the living lifestyles of the agricultural employment avenues in the islands. So when we look into another picture out here, it has been into, and the cropping has been done along with different kinds of fruits and vegetables. Basically, they follow this multi-tier system, which is also known as the multi-layer cropping. So it is a kind of intercropping in which it is growing off the plants and different height at the same field at the same time. It is done to utilize the vertical space more effectively. If you can see that the taller, the taller tree out here is the coconut tree, we also have some of the shorter trees, which can be mangoes or papayas or guavas, can be incorporated. The third tallest here would be any of the spices like ginger or turmeric and some of the vegetables, the tall growing vegetables. And the last one, we also can go with the round cover and the growth of the some vegetables and also small spices like cardamom. So this is the way that the multi-tier system is followed and this is mainly followed in these islands. Some of the flowers which are grown in these islands or found in these islands are orchids. We also have tuberose, we have marigold, gerbera, and thurium. So these flowers in these are right now produced in the high tech conditions in these islands. And the floriculture industry is also booming with a high export potential in orchids and marigold. Now coming to Luxury Deep, Luxury Deep was known and recently announced as the first union territory to become 100% organic as all the farming is carried out without the use of synthetic fertilizers to make agriculture more environmentally friendly. So the synthetic chemicals for agriculture, it was reduced in place manners or in its phased manner since the year of 2005. So Luxury Deep is physically cut off from mainland from the last 15 years and no chemical has been shipped into the territory except for some medicines and some cosmetics. So the farming community practices organic farming and uses organic inputs such as compost, poultry manure, green leaf manures, biofertilizers. So this helps the ecology and the environment in the islands to keep safe and to be preserved. So I hope that you guys have learned something new today and if you guys have liked the video, don't forget to hit the like button. Thank you.